What is good everybody, it is your boy Super Sand Cab back with another video for you guys today. We are here to talk about Xenoverse 2 and Jump Force, mainly because I'm almost getting tired of seeing this conversation in my comments, seeing it on my timeline on Twitter. People are talking about, oh, Jump Force is better than Xenoverse 2 for this, and oh, Xenoverse 2 is better than Jump Force for this. So today, what we're going to do is put an end to this discussion, to this conversation that people are having regarding these two games and truly see which one of them is better. This is not gonna be like that video I did with Xenoverse 2 and Fighters where I was just basically saying that both games are great and they are different and people need to understand that those were different and great in their own way. No, 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 these we're gonna actually be comparing and breaking them down and seeing which one of these is better. Now the things that we're gonna be breaking down within this video is the customization available to us with these two games the offline stuff that we have available to us between these two games the actual game mechanics the way it actually flows as far as a fight you know how the fighting works and things like that between these two games the net code between these two games because that's something that is definitely major as well when you're talking about which game is potentially better than another and then lastly, the last thing we're going to be talking about is the hub world, guys. The hub world is something that a lot of people may not think is very important or think is like, you know, something that, that they care for in a game. But honestly, it's something that can make a big difference. A lot of people were honestly a little fairly disappointed when they did not see how much they had available to them within Jump Force and things like that. So again, we're going to be breaking those down as well. So. First and foremost, starting out with the customization, guys. The customization, you know, when a lot of people will see Jump Force now and first look at it might say, you know, oh man, Jump Force has so much more available to us as far as the customization goes. You know, we could put facial markings on our CEC, we can have multiple colored eyes, we can um, have two accessories at one time. You know, there's these other things that we are able to do within Jump Force. We could put highlights on our CAC's hair, things like that. That are not available within Xenoverse 2. And yes, I give that to Jump Force. And I was glad that they had that in the game. But then when you take a look at the rest of the customization. Besides what you do with your CAC when you are initially creating him. Besides that, what you can actually do with your CACs is not that much. I mean, first and foremost, the biggest issue I have when it comes to the customization potential of your CAC, because to me, customization not only includes how you make them look and their outfits, but it also includes the skills that they have available to them as well. In Jump Force, there are 40 characters in the game. You would think our CACs would almost have 40 ultimates available to us as well. That is not the case, guys. I have every single ultimate unlocked, and I believe it's 18 or 19 in total that we have available to us while xenoverse we have basically over 100 ultimates that we can choose from within this game so without question when it comes to the skills whether it be super attacks or ultimates xenoverse definitely kills jump force in that regard and then when you move on to outfits xenoverse does have a lot more outfits available to its um fan base than jump force has i was fairly disappointed honestly with the amount of outfits that were in jump force and how kind of generic and and just not good looking a lot of them were at the same time so again that's another thing that is a major part of the customization of your cac that xenoverse has over jump force as well and then also even though you can put two accessories on in Jump Force, there are more accessories available to you within Xenoverse 2. Now, when you get into the actual build, which is another part of customization, in my opinion, the actual build, what you do with your CAC, how you make them stronger, how you put his attributes in one category, things like that. That's not something that you can really do within Jump Force. Your CAC, the only thing you can really choose from is the combo type, which is three different types. And they're all types that are already available to the characters within the game. And then the only other thing you could choose is the change element, which is a cool feature, but it's only on 30 skills within the game as well. As opposed to the Xenoverse 2 CAC, there is just so much more that you can do in those regards. It may not have the change element feature just like Jump Force does. But think about everything else that it does have available to us as far as a build goes. We can actually apply stats to our CAC. We can use QQ Bangs and apply those 
to our CAC that actually take effect not only in the offline gameplay but in the online gameplay as well if you want them to when it comes to jump force really the only thing you could do is apply those ability skill things and then I mean I, I believe some J powers or whatever they're called I forget the other things that are kind of similar to super souls but not really at the same time and then on top of that those don't apply when you come to the online rank scene as well so really what is the point of leveling up what is the point of getting these J skills what is the point of putting these ability skills on within jump force if you can only use them in offline and then moving on to the subject of offline jump forces offline stuff is really not that vast there's not much you can really do you do these missions where you're basically just fighting over and over and over and over again there's nothing special about these missions the computer is fairly annoying in how turtle shell they are and how spammy they are just with alts and things like that it's just a nuisance it's not necessarily hard but it's just annoying and not fun at the same time and again, it's the same thing over and over and over and over again. While um, Xenoverse 2, on the other hand, has parallel quests, different parallel quests that are not the same to each other each and every single time. And not only that, you can do these parallel quests with your homies. You can do things like um, the expert missions. You can do those by yourself. You can do them with your homies. That is not an option within Jump Force. All the stuff that is offline, as far as the missions go, you can only do them by themselves, by yourself. And they're pretty much the same thing each and every single time through these missions. And again, getting these J skills and all this stuff from these missions and leveling up with them what is really the point of it if it doesn't really come into play when you are actually playing online or anything like that? Now, for the people who are offline mains, you know, the PvE people, of course it comes into play for them. But then again, they don't have much to do in regards of the, of the offline play like Xenoverse 2 does. The Xenoverse 2 story mode, without question, was by far better. That's something that I, I completely forgot to even bring up. By far, the story mode was much better, even though it was kind of a rinse and repeat thing. It was still... 10 times better i mean a million i mean jump force's story mode was honestly the, the cinematics and all that it was just so bad like when i played the story mode i've skipped the scenes because they're just so annoying to watch so again the story mode for jump force was just terrible there's not much to do in regards of the offline modes as far as the missions and it's the same thing over and over while xenoverse like i said you got the different parallel quests you got the expert missions and you can do all this stuff with your friends at the same time and then you also have the mentors the mentors to get their skills doing the mentor missions with them those might be similar in a sense to um like doing all of them they may be similar missions but at the same time it's something else that xenoverse 2 offers within that offline mode while again jump force is really just offering missions and the story mode which both in my opinion are very very lackluster compared to what xenoverse 2 offers and yes we also get raids in xenoverse 2 that's kind of not really offline you can do that i believe you can participate them if you go through the offline lobby um you still i believe leave you need psn though to still get in them at the same time though jump force is supposedly bring oh i'm sorry for hitting the mic but jump force is supposedly bringing some events thing there's a whole event that, like table station where you can go to and supposedly there's going to be events in the future who knows what those are going to be like we'll see and we can compare them more to raids when we get to those within that time but again as far as the offline stuff like i just mentioned man there's so much more to do within xenoverse 2 for the pve players and just in general for everybody because regardless if you're someone who likes to play pvp or pvp or pve only you still really do a lot of the offline stuff regardless so again in terms of customization and offline stuff already xenoverse 2 to me for the reasons that i explained is much much better now moving on to the actual game mechanics the game mechanics of xenoverse 2 when you really think about it are actually very good the major issue people have is the net code which makes some of the game mechanics look not as good like hit detection things like that but when xenoverse 2 is flowing and you're not having these issues the game mechanics are very very good the way it is played in my opinion is very very good it's very fluid there's opportunities to punish you can do a lot of things um, a lot of different things that's from xenoverse 1 2 2 that they added as far as the snap vanishing you know the, the stamina breaks the burst dashing with the um pressing the yb or the triangle circle things like that so there was a lot of stuff added to make the gameplay much more fluid in xenoverse 2 and it definitely showed and it's a major reason why people still play this game till this 
day is because the gameplay is actually very very fun when you're not having any net code issues the net code is what makes the gameplay go down a little bit but again as far as the mechanics actually work for xenoverse 2 it is a proper fighting game in my opinion and the fact that things are punishable very easily you know if people do spam within xenoverse 2 a lot of times it is extremely punishable if people throw random ults out they're getting stamina broken things like that while it is as in jump force man this is my main issue with jump force is the actual way the game plays one i don't understand why pretty much every move in this game get super armor to it that just absolutely makes no sense i've never seen a game like that where every single move you have has super armor and you cannot be punched out of it like if you are charging a kamehameha and i walk up to you boom punch to the face you're just going through that and still charging your kamehameha i've never seen a game like that that makes absolutely no sense in my opinion and that's one of the major issues around the community but talking about some other issues that i have within this game to me the game does not promote combos i've never heard of a game where i've said okay let me lessen my punches just to make sure that i can get this combo off without my opponent getting out of it the way the stamina system works as i explained in that one video um showcasing how the stamina and, and jump force does not really want combos within the game the stamina you are literally able to use it after every like five or six hits regardless of how quick your opponent catches you again you are still able to get out of another combo very very quickly even though that first stamina advantage takes all of your bar the second one literally takes 0.01 percent once that bar turns from red to blue or regular color again you can use stamina and vanish out of a combo once again which makes absolutely no sense that, that, that where how, how can a stamina vanish take 100 percent and then take one percent that, that that just does not work that does not compute in my head and to me it's something that prevents combos within this game there's also that white stun of death that prevents combos within this game as well i can understand the whole white stun thing if stamina didn't come back so quick and you could use it so easily to constantly get out of combos but the fact that that white stun thing is there and the stamina vanishing being so quick is there at the same time it absolutely makes no sense why they even have that really a lot of times when it comes to the online play you don't see people run into that white stun of death because you can get out of a combo before that even happens before your opponent reaches that amount of hits you should be able to get out of a combo with your stamina and then you move on to a thing like high speed counters high speed counters is another thing that prevents combos from within this game high speed counters i've never heard of something where i'm literally hitting you and then out of nowhere a slow down animation comes you stop and hit me huh and the only way for me to punish that is by using a high speed vanish but check this out the high speed vanish takes more stamina from you than the high speed counter takes from your opponent so in the end you're really being punished by losing stamina and not getting as much of a combo off as you should have if that high speed counter wasn't there so the high speed counter to me is a very very dumb mechanic especially since you could just smash x or square depending on what kind of controller you're using and it actually works like you can just mash the button and you will still be able to get out of it so that's another mechanic that just absolutely makes no sense why is that even in a game How, who thought of something like that and thought it was okay to put it into a fighting game this is like a 3d battle arena spam fest it almost seems like that's what the creators were aiming for when it comes to the online because again all those things that i just mentioned prevent combos from really being a thing within jump force and then on top of that it's so easy to just spam moves because they have super armor so right now the state of jump force is honestly not really good there's still those fanboys that support it heavily and like oh my god jump force is the best thing ever and th that's their opinion that okay but for the most part a lot of people are already hopping off the game it hasn't even been out a month and a lot of people are getting off the game already losing interest with it already just due to these issues that i just mentioned with the actual gameplay mechanics but that's one another category that honestly just goes to xenoverse 2 right now xenoverse 2 in my opinion wins in terms of customization what you can do in the offline modes 
and the actual game mechanics, the way the game actually plays. And then now we move on to the netcode. Netcode is something that Jump Force, I have to give them credit for. Jump Force actually did very, very well with the netcode, and that's very surprising coming from a Bandai game. But Jump Force's netcode is actually very, very good. There's really never any issues as term in terms of lagging or anything like that. Like I've had a couple of issues maybe in the beta, things like that. But since the actual game has come out, really haven't had many lag issues um of that or anything of that nature and that's the biggest flaw within xenoverse 2 is the net code the way the game plays online at times depending on your opponent and how good your connection is with them so again that is probably the only thing that i say jump force actually wins because then when you move into the hub world the hub world of course xenoverse 2 is, is way better and way bigger and there's more stuff to do within it as opposed to jump force like what can you really do within jump force's hub world besides go to the missions um all the, the counters and buy things and stuff like that and it's very very small um as well at the same time so for the most part guys xenoverse 2 has better customization a better offline mode better offline modes better game mechanics in terms of how it actually plays the fighting the way the fighting works and it has a better hub world jump force only has a better net code so when there's a game that has four categories that it's winning and a game that only really has one, I'm pretty sure the game that has four is much, much better than the, only, the one that only has one category to it. And again, you guys have to understand, a lot of people may be thinking Jump Force is better right now because it's what's, it's what's new and things like that. It just came out. But do you really think anybody will really be playing Jump Force two and a half years down the line if they do not change things up? within the game as far as how it actually plays no the game will die before that time comes but when you look at xenoverse 2 it is still thriving till this day people still heavily play it till this day so again to me it's no comparison and it's something that needs to stop being compared as well when it comes to social media and how I'm, i've seen it in my comments I understand that some people's opinion is what it is but at the same time for the the things i just laid out it's almost factual that xenoverse 2 is a better game than jump force but let me know what you guys think on what i had to say down below in the comments really really hope you guys enjoyed this video at the same time like i said th this one was an actual breakdown of these two games to see which one is better as opposed to that one i did with fighters and xenoverse that one i was just appreciation for both and understanding that both were different games jump force and xenoverse are similar in the sense that they got cac's it's 3d there's um a hub world all this different stuff they're very very similar in those regards so again that's why we did this breakdown like we did let me know your thoughts on it down below in the comments but as always man thank you guys so much for watching really really hope you guys enjoyed until next time hope you have a good day hey y'all